Want to clap your hands and give God praise all over this place. I have one clapper. I see two clappers. Can I get the house to put their hands together? Give our God a praise because he's worthy to be exalted across all the earth. Amen. He's a good God. He's greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, we serve the awesome God. Amen. Good morning and God bless you, Miracle Center family. To all of our first time guests that are in the house, we want to welcome you to the Miracle Center. We believe that God's power truly flows through this place. Pastor Lonnie and Sister Kimberly, they have a word for you this morning. To all the people that are watching by Facebook and YouTube Live, we want to welcome you here. 38 Taloma Drive, Ventura, California. If you're in the county, we want to see you here in the building. Every Sunday, 10 o'clock, you can catch us right here. Are you guys ready for an awesome service this morning? Are you guys ready to go into his throne room with thanksgiving and gladness and praise? Amen. So then do me a favor, y'all. Just lift your hands up to the heavens from which cometh our help. We'll open up the service with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all that you're getting ready to do in this service this morning. God, we thank you in advance for the word that will go forth, for the transformation of hearts of people in the, in the congregation that will hear this word, God, for the people that will be touched through the airwaves, God, of Facebook and YouTube Live, we give you praise. For the people that are on their way to come and fellowship with us, God, we thank you in advance for traveling mercies, God. And as we lift up praise and worship to your ear, God, let it be a sweet sound, God. Please come by here, Lord. Let your spirit rest on us this morning, God. Let your anointing flow through this place, God. And we'll be so careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory because you're more than deserving. You're more than worthy. You are an awesome God. And we are so excited and thankful that we have you to praise and you to thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, all that believe that put their hands together. Amen. Give them some praise. Hallelujah. We praise your great name, God. Everything you do, you do well. Amen. He's a big God, so we're going to give him some big praise this morning. Let's do it, team. Are y'all ready? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know what you've been going through, and I don't know what you're believing God for, but he's going to fulfill and meet every expectation. He's going to do it bigger and better than what you had in mind. Amen? So we make this declaration, and we declare that I believe. My season. It's my season. Oh, and I believe. I believe. Yes, that it's my time. That it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. Breakthrough is in the room. Breakthrough is in the room. Anybody else anticipating? We declare this. We say, for I know, for I know, my God is worth a miracle. Just for you and me. Just for me. And it's gonna be. And it's gonna be big. We serve a great God who's greatly to be praised. He's getting ready to move on your behalf. It's gonna be. And it's gonna be. We give you praise, God, and we believe God's going to open the windows, windows of heaven. heaven. Pour me out a Pour me room. Pour me room to contain it. Don't even try to explain it. And it's going to be And we believe big. God's about to blow your mind. God's about to blow, blow your mind. mind. And I believe. And I believe. Yeah, that it's my season. It's my season. We give you all the praise, God. And I believe. And I believe. Oh, that it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. I can feel it. Breakthrough is in the room. Breakthrough is in the room. And God, we're anticipating. Anticipating. God's getting ready to move. Going back to that declaration, for I know, for I know that God is worth a miracle just for me. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be big. I need you to get excited out there. 
because God is moving and shaking and redirecting things just for you. And it's going to be. And it's going to be. And so we lift up a praise to you, oh God. We're waiting in expectation for what you're going to do next. And so we say, God's going to. God's going to open the windows of heaven. Pour me out of Won't be room. Won't be room to contain it. Don't even try to explain it. And it's going to be. God's about to blow your mind. God's about to blow my mind. Yes, it's gonna be. And it's gonna be big. It's gonna be big. It's got to be big. It's gonna be big. Your next promotion. The next car you drive. The thing you're going through. He's gonna make it real. And it's gonna be. It's gonna be, big. it's gonna be, big. it's gonna be, big. that it's gonna be, big. it's gonna be, big. it's gonna be, big. it's gonna be, big. and then we say this, we say the next thing God does, the next thing God does. it's gonna be big, it's gonna be big, the next thing God does, the next thing God does. it's gonna be big, it's gonna be big, the next thing God does. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be big. So the next thing I do. Next thing I do. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be big. So it's gonna be big. 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 So it's gonna be big. 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 Say it, I believe. That it's my season. That it's my season. We bless your name, oh God. Say it, I believe. I believe. Yes, that it's my time. That it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. Breakthrough is in the room. Breakthrough is in the room. Yes, God, we're anticipating. Anticipating. God's gift. Ready to move. Ready to move. Oh, for I know. For I know that God is worth a miracle just for me. And it's gonna be. Big. Come on and clap your hands if you know that God is getting ready to do something that you couldn't fathom that you could make up with your own imagination because his word says exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could ask or think. That's the kind of God we serve. So we should get excited because he's getting ready to do something real, real big. Amen. It's going to be big. Hallelujah. There is a miracle in the works. I believe it. I'm holding on to it by faith. Amen. That's the song that we're lifting up this morning. Come on, Maya. Some may say it's hopeless. They must have never met my God. Some may say it's broken, but it was finished on the cross. Some may say it's over. But the healer's in the room. Some may say it's hopeless, but I know God's about to move. God's about to move. And there is a miracle in the works. Too. Some may see a battle, but I 
but he's a miracle worker. Come on and lift two voices all over this room. We bless you, oh God. You're a miracle worker. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We give you praise. You are a miracle. Hallelujah. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, then I'm on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you got. There's honey in the rock. Come on, Rissa. Only you can satisfy. 
There's honey in the rock. 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 Yeah, oh, freedom where the spirit is, bounty in the wilderness. Only you will satisfy. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone. Lord, for being all we need. for our life, God. There's no other way but by you, God. We trust in you. We put all our faith in you. There's nobody else like you. We praise you, God. We press in your presence this morning, God. We lay it all at your feet, God. Woo. No matter where I go, I don't need to worry now that I And we go. say everything, everything I need you. There's honey in the rock. Purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. Started flowing when you said it is everything I need. Everything I need, you got. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is. Come on and lift that up, church. Trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet. How sweet Can we sing heaven down this morning? To trust in you, oh. Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is. We put our trust in you, Jesus. To trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is. To trust 
and let's make it personal. We'll say, oh, how sweet, how sweet it is. I trust in you, Jesus. I trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is. I trust, I trust in you, Jesus. Now, if you put all your trust in him, all your faith, in the good times and the bad times, when I'm up, when I'm down, when my back is against the wall, when I don't understand it, God, all my trust is in you, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh. Trust in you, Jesus. Oh, how sweet, how sweet it is to trust, to trust in you, Jesus. Oh. somebody clap your hands and give God praise. Come on in here. Yay! Yeah. Woo! Come on seniors one more time. Come on. Come on. There's honey in the rock. Woo! Water in the stone. Man on the ground. No matter where I go. There's honey in the rock. There's honey in the rock. Oh, there's honey, yeah. There's honey in the rock. 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 Water in the stone. And I'm on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need. Everything I need, you got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan. Power in your blood, healing in your hand. Started flowing when you said that it's done. Everything you did. Everything I need. Stretch your hands before you have your seat. Bishop Allen, come up here. Way from the other side of the campus. My little brother, Bishop Allen. Snuck in here. Because before you have your seats, we're not only going to pray for you, but there's something very important we want to announce. You all have seen the advertisement about this coming Wednesday. Bishop Allen. You know that there is a circus that's going to be starting on Thursday up in Thousand Oaks, and it's a, the, the, the people over that may be very innocent. Their mindset is just to do a door opening to spirits, but we know too much. We know what happens, and forces of darkness could care less if you're ignorant, if you're playing, they will enter in a portal and rip your home to pieces. And when we heard about this, we thought, not on our watch. And so how important is Wednesday? It's so important, the power of agreement. We are the prophets of the region. And the Bible says we have the authority to stop things from coming in 
and we have the authority to release God's grace and power. And sometimes things seem so innocent and so subtle, but we have to understand that in the time and the season that we're living in, we cannot allow an event like this to come into our region without putting up spiritual opposition. So how do we put up spiritual opposition to these type of spirits? Well, first thing we have to do is activate our faith. It's not faith because we think it. It's not faith because we feel it. But when we verbally begin to speak and put our words in the atmosphere, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verses 16 through 18, that whosoever coming, touching and agreeing, as touching and agreeing, that Jesus is in the midst. So Wednesday evening, we are asking the believers from Ephraim, Manasseh. We are asking the believers from the Miracle Center. And wherever you may be, to meet us here in this place. And this place is going to become a portal to heaven to raise up a hedge. Now, the Bible says that when the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, yes. God raises up a standard. Yes. I need you just to lightly kind of look at someone and say, are you the standard? Are you the standard? Say, well, if you're the standard, then I need you to meet me here Wednesday night. Yes. And we're going to lift up a hedge. So, someone say, I'm the hedge. I'm the shield. I'm the, shield. I'm the buckler. I'm the buckler. Psalm 91 says, he that dwelleth in the secret place yes. of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Yes. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. And then it says, and he is my shield and my buckler. Yes. So if he's my shield, then he's shielding things off of me. If he's my buckler, then I'm able to hit some things and move them back. So Wednesday night at 7 p.m., it's important for us to gather and come in agreement. And we'll be here at 7, and if you're out of town, those of you that watch us through social media, Miracle Center or Ephraim, it'll be on Facebook and YouTube. Now you all just stretch your hands real quick. Father, we come into agreement for what's going to happen this Wednesday. There will be a corporate gathering. There will be a shield. There will be such an anointing release that nothing will penetrate our region unless we let it in. We decree this in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you sit down, give Bishop a big hand clap. Sing it one more time, singer. Look. Water in the soul. Honey, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hand. Started flowing when you said it is done. Everything you did is enough. Everything I need is enough. There's honey in the rock. Come on, put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, we're the church. Say, we're the church. Come on, shout, we are the church. And we have authority. Listen, on Wednesday, we are going to flood this place with the glory of God. Did you hear what I said? We are going to flood this place with the glory of God. We're going to move some things. Say, we are the church. And I'm ready. Listen, why don't you high five somebody and say, I'm the church. I'm the church. Now listen, if you are not connected to the church, this is a good time to get connected. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world. You guys know that, right? We just got out of a COVID pandemic. Listen, when I'm at work, I'm still gowning up. I still gotta, <laughs> I still gotta wear the mask and the gloves and the, and the shield and everything else. So I'm still gowning up. So we got a lot of stuff going on in the church. We do, we're hearing that we have an, uh, economic uh, pandemic coming. You guys heard about that, right? 
There's a big shift coming in the dollar, the US dollar, we know about that. You guys know about monkeypox, right? Yeah, we're getting all kinds of emails at work about monkeypox. And then this new one, I don't know if you know about this, but there's the Langya virus. Have you heard about that one yet? Yeah, you heard about that. Well, what is going on? Well, if you know anything about your Bible or you understand Bible prophecy, then you know everything that is going on has been predicted. It's been predicted. Everything that's going on has been predicted to happen before Christ comes, before Jesus comes and raptures the church out of this world. He's going to come and take the church out of this world, and I am so glad I will not be here when a lot of this stuff happens in this world. How about you? Listen, but while we are here, while we are still here, we have power, we have authority, and we are holding things back. Say, we're the church. Listen, we are holding things back, and God says that if God be for you, who can be against you? Do you know what that means? That means God is for the church, and if you are connected to the church, what or what battle or who can come against you? Because when they come against you, when they come against the church, they are coming against God, and who can fight against God and win? <laughs> Say, we're the church. Come on, put your hands together for the King of Kings, the God that set up a system for you. You don't have to fear at this time. We are the church, but it's important to get connected. This is not a time to be a loner. Listen to this. There is spiritual protection in the pack. Say, we're the church. Let me say it again. There is spiritual protection in the pack. We are the pack of the church. Nothing can come against the church. The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Come on, say, we're the church. Listen, this is a time to get connected. There is a spiritual covering in connection. And if you don't know how to get connected, if you're not connected, here at the Miracle Center, we have an MCC church app. You can get connected right there and, and also watching by social media. You're not connected just because you're watching. You're connected when you become a member and when you are active in the Miracle Center or whatever church you're going to. So how do you get connected? There's an MCC church app, and in that MCC church app, it gives you the an opportunity to become a member or to work in the area of ministry. If you have been coming to this church at any point in time and you have not gone to the MCC app and register registered yourself as a member or as a helps ministry worker, we call it one team ministry, then you're partially connected. And this is a season to get connected to the church. God set up a system to cover you, and the church will cover you. Remember I said there is spiritual power, spiritual protection in the pack, and we're the pack of the church. It's a system God set up. And God set up a system to cover your household when it comes to finances. It's called tithes and offering. See, tithes and offering is not just about giving to the church and supporting the church. It's a system that God set up to cover your household and cover your finances in times like this. I want to give you an opportunity to get connected, first through the Miracle Center Church app, and also if you don't have the Miracle Center Church app or you don't know how to download it, you can go to our Miracle Center website that's connected to the church app, and you can also become a member or attached to the Helps Ministry, join the Helps Ministry through the Miracle Center website. So right now, I want to give you an opportunity to connect to the church to cover your finances during times like this. It's a time to put seed in the ground and get your household covered under the system that God provided. He said, give and he will give back to you. Not your job, not the government, but he will give back to you. So if you need a tithe and offering envelope, I want you to lift your hands up. One of the offering uh, ushers will get that to you. We also give by way of the MCC Church app. So why don't you go ahead and get that ready? And what we're going to do, what, like we always do every Sunday, is we're going to worship God with our finances. So after you get it ready, I want you to stand to your feet, and I want you to go back to, we're honey in the rock. I yeah. love that. So come forward, you guys. Come forward. And go ahead and start that.
So if you're ready, I want you to start coming. We're going to worship God with our honey hearts. in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you got. There's honey in the rock. See, we're giving to get connected. Listen, I know that you guys are standing and you've been standing. Thank you, team. I know you've been standing for a while, but the things we do in the church, God set them up, that the things we do in the church position you for help. We know when we put our hands together, we're stimulating the organs of our body. When we're singing and when we're shouting, we're allowing lymphatic fluid to flow through our body. So he set it up that what we do in the church positions you for health because God wants you healthy and God wants you whole. Can you put your hands together for the system of the church? 
Come on, put your hands together. <laughs> now listen, I want you, before you have your seats, I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to say, we are the church and we have power. We are the church and we have power. You may have your seats. Now listen, last week I said taking care of your body is not a discipline issue, it's a love issue because we tend to take care of, we tend to take care of what we love and what we value. We take care of our cars because we value our cars. We take care of our children with the right mind because we love our children. Well listen, we don't need discipline to take care of our children. We love our children, we take care of them. We may need skill, but we don't need discipline. So we tend to love and we tend to take care of what we love for what we love. So it's not a discipline issue. And if we're disciplined in other areas of our lives, we don't lack discipline when it comes to the physical body. It's a love issue. It's not a discipline issue. And last week, we, were to we started talking about taking care of the physical body as a temple, not through whipping the body in shape, but loving the body into health and wholeness. And that's what we've been talking about. And I gave you a verse of scripture that said, don't you know your body? It's a temple. It's a home. It's a sanctuary for the, for the Holy Spirit. God lives through you. And God placed such high value on your physical body that he took dirt from the ground, he formatted it, and he structured it into a physical structure, and then he took his divine breath, and he blew his divine breath into that dirt structure that became a living human being. Think about this. The breath that you just breathe this very moment is the same breath that God breathed into mankind at creation. And God calls that physical structure he breathed his breath into the temple. Your body is a temple. Say, my body, my body. is a temple. Come on, say it again. I want you to get this. Say, my body, my body. is a temple. Now listen, I want to show you how to love your temple into health and wholeness and put the whips down and stop the self-abuse and the criticism of the physical body. I want to teach you how to value your body as a temple for health. Now to understand how to value the body and to begin this teaching, we have to go back to basics. And what are the basics? How did God create you? I've talked about this before. God created you in three parts. You are not what people are looking at right now. That's just one part of you. God created you with three parts. Say three parts. You are a spirit. The real part of you is the spirit part of you. When you go to a funeral, the spirit part of that person never goes in the casket. The spirit part of you was sent from God and will return to God when you are finished with your assignment and you will give an account for what you did with your spirit while you were down here on earth. That's the spirit part of you. And then you also have a soul. The soul is where you process your life, your environment. The soul consists of your will, your imagination, your intellect, your memory, and your emotions. Your, your soul causes you to have your character. And then there's the physical body. See, the physical body is your outer suit. That's what God structured from dirt and blew the breath in. And when I'm talking about loving the temple, I'm talking about learning to love the physical body. And God, he regards the physical body as the temple. Say, my body is a temple. And we have to start valuing the body and stop the self-abuse of the temple. Anytime you say, I hate my thighs, I hate my hair, I hate my stomach, I hate my lips, you are speaking against the temple of God. And this season, we are going to put the whips down and start regarding and seeing the temple, the body, like God in high value. Listen, understand this. The word hate is a potent expression that carries energy. 
This energy changes the chemistry in the physical body. Listen, health comes in the body when there is a frequency of 62 to 78 megahertz. So health happens in the body. It's measured at a 62 to 78 megahertz. Listen to this. Sickness, disease, and cancer occurs when the megahertz drop below 62. Remember I said cancer happens at a megahertz at about 40? So it's important what we say, what we do, because it affects the health of the body. Now I want you to hear me, because megahertz are changed by environmental toxins. We already know that. We know pollution, pesticides, and preservatives in foods can change the megahertz in the physical body. But listen to this. Environmental toxins don't just come from the outside. Environmental toxins can come from the inside in the soul. See, that's why we dealt with unforgiveness. Because remember I said unforgiveness? I said it's a disease that releases a toxin called bitterness, and that toxin in the soul is released in the body and changes the megahertz. And when you use the word hate towards your body, it carries an energy that alters the megahertz in the physical body, opening the door to sickness and disease. Do you get it? What are you supposed to say? Let me say it again. Do you get it? Good. Listen. Your thoughts and your words carry energy. What did I say? When you speak or think from the soul, anything negative about the physical body, it releases the, an energy into the physical body that changes the megahertz. Do you guys want to know some common symptoms that the megahertz are being changed? because things are being released from the soul and the body? You want to know some of the symptoms? Oh, I'm not convinced. You want to know some of the symptoms? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I want to make sure you're out there. Okay, here's some symptoms. Fatigue, headaches, chest pain, body aches, irritability, and problems sleeping. See, if, you're, and if you carry these negative thoughts in the soul for a long period of time, it causes inflammation in the body. And when inflammation is in the body for too long, it causes autoimmune disease. Your body is a temple. And we have to learn how to take care of the body by what we are thinking and what we are speaking from the soul. Every thought you get is not your thought. Some thoughts that you are getting they're coming as fiery darts from the enemy. Why? Because if the enemy can't destroy you from the outside, he's going to go to the inside of your soul and drop in thoughts to get you to say and do things to speak against your physical body and change the frequency of your physical body so your thoughts and your words destroy your temple. See, listen, God wants you healthy and God wants you whole. Your body is a temple created by God. We are going to start loving and valuing our bodies and stop the thoughts, the negative thoughts and the negative words that we're speaking from the soul over the physical body. And last week, Pastor gave us a dynamic strategy in, a t in that teaching when he talked about the story with the coffee. And listen, that was a powerful, a powerful way to show us how to stop the thoughts in the soul. He didn't call it the soul. He calls it the mind. So we can interchange this soul with the mind. And we have to stop what's happening in the soul so it doesn't transfer into the physical body. And what he gave us and what he told us to do is to start thinking about what we're thinking about. How many of you guys did that? He said to think about what you're thinking about. That means you have to be aware, you have to be mindful of the messages coming from your mind or your soul that is speaking against the body. See, you have to think about what's, 
happening in your mind or your soul. When you get a negative message about your body, listen, you have to shut it down. What did I say? You have to do what? Say, I'm shutting it down. Come on, get an attitude. Say, I'm shutting it down. Yeah, so when you get these negative, <laughs> when you get these negative thoughts, you got to shut it down. You have to shut it down. And how you shut it down, you don't shut down a thought with another thought. You shut down a thought when you open your mouth and you say something. Yeah. See, any thought from the soul that says you're worthless, that is a lie. So these thoughts that are coming, speaking against the body, it's a lie. So you have to open your mouth up and shut it down and call it for what it is. That's a lie. You have to say liar. liar. And the enemy's a liar. Come on, shout liar. liar. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to practice. I want everybody standing up. Because you don't just learn just from watching me and hearing me. You learn when we do it. Okay? So I'm going to give you some scenarios, and we're going to learn to shut it down. See, I'm shutting it down. <laughs> so listen, if you get a thought that says you'll always be sick, you'll always have pain in your body, just get used to it. What are you going to do? <laughs> Let me tell you again. If you get a thought, I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. Listen, if you get a thought that says you'll always be sick, you'll always have pain in your body, just get used to living this life the way it is, it'll never get better, what are you going to do? And how you shut it down is you say out loud, liar, my body is God's temple. I want you to say that. Now, if you get a thought that says you're ugly, you're fat, you're not good enough, what are you going to do? And what are you going to say? Okay, you guys don't got it yet. Okay, so if you get a thought that says, oh, just indulge, enjoy life. No matter what you do, it will always be the same. Your body will never change. What are you going to do with that thought? And what are you going to say to it? Come on, say it again. Again. Now, this is the strategy on how you start shutting those thoughts down. Open your mouth, liar. My body is God's temple. Listen, I want you to practice it. I want you to go and find about two or three people. And listen, I don't want you to say it in this passive way. I want you to get an attitude. Because when the thoughts come, the thoughts are coming to steal, kill, and destroy the physical body. So I want you to get an attitude. Go find about two or three people, and I want you to get an attitude and tell them what you're going to do when you get a thought that comes against the body. this song I love what it does in the atmosphere you may have your seats thank you just love hearing this song I would keep it going the whole time I'm up here if I could concentrate but I can't it sounds so precious um, I want to make a quick statement, then I'm going to get into this teaching, and we're going to, the goal is to be right on time here today. Um, I want to pray for Linda and Jeff McKenzie. Linda's mother, uh, her name is Barbara, but it, my, I've never called her that, <laughs> so, so it's, 
It's weird. I'm, I'm just not used to call, her, calling her by her first name. But Linda's mother was such a precious woman. And she went home to be with the Lord, was it a week ago now? About a week ago. They'll be having a service for her up in Sacramento where most of their family are. I want to pray for Jeff and Linda. I, I can't think of a couple more giving to people when you are hurting. I'm amazed how when someone's hurting, they make themselves available. I want to make sure we do the same for them. And I want to pray for them. I want to pray for their family. And um, uh, it's never easy when there's a transition with a mother or a child or father. And so uh, even if people make it look easy, it isn't. So I want everybody to come into agreement with me and uh, I'm going to pray for Jeff and Linda. So Jeff, Linda, if you guys would please just come on down here. I want everybody to stand up. I want you to stretch your hand towards this couple. And I don't think, is Jeffrey here? To, I don't, is Jeffrey, if you're here, come up. I don't know if any of the kids are here. If you are, there's Jeffrey there. Come on up. When Linda and Jeff got the news, they were actually in uh, Italy. Um, one of their daughters, as you know, uh, sings opera, and she was doing some tour stuff or whatever, but uh, of course they made it, came back home when they heard the news and all, but I want you all to stretch your hands towards this family. Father, in Jesus' name, I cover this family. I put a perimeter around them, and I thank you now that there's a grace being released to bring them the kind of joy that only you can bring. I thank you that every need of theirs will be met over and above. And the way they give to others, may an abundance of that come back to them, pressed down, shaken up, and running over. With friends, with family, with resources, whatever is needed, they will not lack or miss a thing. And may their mother and the legacy that she has released on her family not only live, but be obvious and evident in the people. And let this family shine. Let them be a light to the rest of their family. I decree this. And I rebuke the spirit of death over their family. You'll stop. No one will go before their time. From this moment forward, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Love you guys. God bless you. Love you, man. Bless you guys. Come on, give a big hand clap. A very precious family, been in our church for years. You may have your seats. Now, if you're here for the first time or watching us by one of the social media platforms, what you just heard was a, a gift of utterance. Sometimes it'll come in an unknown tongue and then followed by a gift uh, of interpretation so that you can know what the Lord is saying. Sometimes he'll prompt someone that have the courage and he'll speak through them like that. And the Bible says that we're to judge it, to make sure it's of God. And that certainly was. And it not necessarily was this for this family down here. But I sense that was a word for people in here that maybe death has knocked at your door. The word is, you will live and not die. The word is, stand strong. The word is, don't you give in. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. No, come on, clap your hands and give God praise, would you? All right, now, I'm going to get into this teaching here. There's a lot of things going on, and you heard Dr. K up here who puts it so well. How she connects the word and science to me is of 
very brilliant thing. And I hope you don't take it for granted. I hope you don't just ignore it. Some very powerful keys. And uh, we are dealing with a subject here. This is part two on how to get victory over the voices in our head. Uh, the subject is actually get out of my head. And we're dealing with the two voices, and sometimes there's more than two voices, but generally it boils down to that. And all of us at some point has been a victim to these voices. I don't care who you are, everybody at some point has been a victim to these voices. And even though we know at some point in our life there's going to be a storm, if you think there isn't, you are real foolish. You are not going to live on this earth and there not be some kind of storm. That's why church is important. That's why growing is important so that you can learn before the storms come what to do because they're coming. I, maybe you didn't hear that. They are going to come. No one's going to live storm free. It's an impossibility. That's why you get anchored in the word, but the word doesn't elevate you. Battles elevate you. The word anchors you, but the battles is what elevates you so you can get ranking in God's kingdom so that when you speak and when you do something, stuff will shift. Things will really happen. You're not just going through the mechanics hoping that something's going to happen. You walk away knowing it. And even though there comes a time where you know, I'm going to go through some storms. Some storms, you're going to get breakthrough. I've said this throughout my teachings for years. And some storms, you're not going to get breakthrough. You're going to get walkthrough, but you still are going to get deliverance, whether you get breakthrough or walkthrough. Now, breakthrough, we all want, because breakthrough, we come through right away, and there's no challenges. There's no, you know, we feel good because we got breakthrough. Amen. I want breakthrough. Man, dear God, when we went through the biggest storm in our life, I wish I would have got a breakthrough. I didn't get a breakthrough. We had to walk through. But we still got through. And the key is you want to get through. I don't care what you're facing. And I'm telling you, you will, you will have those opportunities. And so when you walk through and don't get the breakthrough like we all pray for, the walk through, in a sense, is better. The breakthrough you come through, and guess what? You're through, you thank God. But let me tell you, you haven't really learned much. There's no wisdom that comes with breakthrough. But I'll tell you, when you walk through something, and God says, I'm going to get you through what you're going to walk through, because while you're walking through, you're going to learn. You're going to learn how to take care of your body. You're going to learn how to eat. You're going to learn how to talk. You're going to learn how to do things so that I don't have to keep giving you breakthrough. If you get breakthrough and you don't get the wisdom from walkthrough, then all your life, God will have to rescue you with breakthrough. But what if you don't get breakthrough in time? So if you get walkthrough, you get the wisdom that comes at the other end of victory. Some people never get the wisdom, so it's one relationship after the next relationship or one bondage after the next bondage, one health issue after the next health issue because they don't get the wisdom that you get through the walkthrough. So some of you are wondering, Pastor, how come I haven't been healed? How come I didn't get my breakthrough? Maybe you're going through a walkthrough. Amen. And don't you dare give up, but while you're going through the walkthrough, learn the principles, learn the things you need to learn so that you can always be free. And then when it comes to the end, and everybody has an end. I said last week, I don't care who you are. Listen, everybody in the sound of my voice here and the thousands that will see this, I'm going to tell you right now, there's an end date. You're going to leave this earth. All of us. It's not the question where you're going to leave. It's just when. So while you're here, you have to understand this is short. And there's certain things that tell you it's short, like your body. I don't care who you are. You get every year you age. You could fight it and do all that stuff. You know, we do all that stuff. Thank God they have just for men and stuff like that. that you, could, you could fight all that stuff. But the truth of the matter is, under all that, you're still aging every year. And pretty soon your body starts to tell you, because before when you didn't need a nap uh, on a Sunday, now you're thinking, let me get to my chair so I can take a nap, because your body's telling you, even though you can manipulate to some degree. And then when it's all over, you get to the end, and everybody will then you have to make sure that you have that peace you need with God. Because then you're going to transition, and life isn't over. You're going to live another version of you. Just like this is another version. Before this life, you're in your mother living a version. You don't, you don't want to go back to that version. Why? It's a lesser version. This version is a lesser version that you're going to live when you leave here. And we keep moving to these different versions of life. The point I'm trying to make is, at some point, you have to understand, like a baby. A baby doesn't want to come out of the mother's womb. It thinks, womb, it thinks this is as good as it gets, man. Why would I want to leave this place? 
And then it comes out, and now none of us want to go back inside of our mother. Why? Because it, it, it doesn't get better than this. Earth is the same way. We're going to leave here and think, man, I didn't know it could get so good. And I'm saying this because if you start growing now, before you hit a crisis, it gives you time not only to exist here, but to live and to not just survive, but to thrive. And then you get to the end, and I'm thinking, I see Anthony and Deanna here, and that's Mitch is here today. God bless you, sir. Good to see you. Who, um, you know, Anthony and Deanna, who are going to be part of our pastoral staff on the first, are going to be part of the group we're going to be praying for. They run our children's ministry. Anthony's mother and Mitch's wife, as you know, for uh, I forget when, but she was dying of stage four cancer in service. She was healed instantly. And for, for years. And now we just got word that something happened to one of her kidneys and, you know, she's outlived everything they said. And now she is on her, her bed and she's in transition. And um, when this happens, you, you know, okay, that nothing's taking me out except the thing that's going to transport me to the next dimension. But once you walk in the steps of purpose, it makes it easier. It's not a whole lot to regret at the end. And that's the thing I'm, I want everybody to understand. Last, Sunday, last Wednesday on my, my Wednesday night, I talked about the five things the majority of people regret when they die. It's five of them. I'm not going to deal with them. Now you can go on the social media and pick those things up. Today I want to deal with how to deal with these, these voices in our head because your life is based on you live your life based on the voices, your thoughts. You understand that your life is the quality of your thinking, not the quality of how many times you come to church, how many Bible scriptures you know, not how many times you enter church. The Bible says that as a man thinketh, not as he prayeth, not as he comes to church, as he thinks, so is he. I know people that's been to church since I was a kid, but they're still in bondage because Church doesn't change you. Thinking changes you. And if you don't understand this, you go through the motions and think, because I'm there, I'm changing. Listen, that's like going to the gym saying, because I'm there, I'm, I'm getting in shape. I would love, wouldn't that be a good little deal? I'm joining that thing, boy. All you do is show up. No, you got to go and do something. Church is the same way. And so that's why we're dealing with this, because most of us have become victim of this voice, and because that voice in us sounds like us, it doesn't sound like God, it doesn't sound like the devil, we, we just think it's normal. And if you don't conquer the voice in your head, it will control your life. And so that's what we're dealing with. Because eventually the thing that's in your head will be in your hand. Because we're birthing things with our thoughts. And so I want everybody to pay very close attention because all of us get attacked with these voices different ways. Every single person, doesn't matter who you are, based on the calling in your life, you know, what God called you to do, based on your character, you know, the level of character you walk in, these voices will deal with you in different ways. Uh, your commitments, based on the level of commitments, and your connections. The voices attack you based on those things in your life. Because these voices tend to know how to come at you based on your personality and the attachments in your life. And this is why we have to understand this because the voices are very, very adaptable to the characteristics of the life that you live. And all of us live 85 to 90% of the same life every day. I know that's a shocker to people, but you have to intentionally break that, come out of the spell, or else I'm telling you, until you die, 80 to 90% of everything you do is exactly the same. Guarantee you nobody crawled out of bed this morning different than you did last, yesterday or the day before or the day before or the day before. No one. Guarantee you. If you run to the, the coffee machine before you do the restroom, I guarantee you did it this morning and you did it yesterday and the day before and you've been doing it for years and you're going to keep doing it until you intentionally break it. And advertisers understand this. But Satan understands it more than ever. Some of us have been doing things since we were young, and we're still doing them because Satan knows how the mind works. If he can get us to do certain things for a certain period of time, and we hold that thought in our mind, 
that thought in our mind eventually will become part of our lifetime. And eventually, it will change the structure of our brain. And a belief system is born. And even if it's a lie, you will think it's the truth. You've talked to people, you just think, man, can't you see? Can't you see how stupid that is? They can't see it. Why? Because once you believe something is truth, it doesn't matter if it's a lie, you will act on it and everything in your body will treat it as truth. And this is why a lot of people are destroyed because they don't understand this basic principle that I'm talking about. And so what we have to do is we have to understand that because the human being operates and it's such a unique thing that we operate through these voices inside. And God has a way to speak to us inside, but if we don't understand God's voice, if we don't know the difference between our voice, God's voice, and satanic voices, then we get confused. I wish there were three separate voices, like God's voice had a high angelic pitch and Satan's voice was low, deep, and wicked. I know how my voice is, but everything that comes in your head sounds just like you. That's why it's so confusing. You think it's always you, and really it's not. So, because we're all attacked in different ways, I'm not going to get into all that because everybody's different based on your commitments, your character, based on the calling, things in your life. But all of us have certain attacks. There's eight attacks that all of us get the same way. I'm just going to give you a couple today and then we'll finish this next week. One is this victim mentality. Everybody's attacked with that at some point. Victim mentality are the thoughts that says, everybody's against me. And at some point, the enemy will do this to you. Everybody will get these thoughts because what the enemy wants us to do is have a victim mentality because the victim mentality just rolls over and says, well, I can't do anything because everybody's against me. And, and if you're not careful, you'll start feeling this way. And if the enemy can get you to believe this, he, he can get you to believe something is really wrong with you. And so you have to be real careful of this victim mentality, victim mentality where every time I go somewhere, I'm thinking somebody's against me and I don't want to do anything or go anywhere because everybody is against me and the world is terrible and everybody's wrong with me. That's a victim mentality and you have to really watch that. A lot of us get caught up in that. Now, I understand they're real victims of real things, rape and incest and, and crimes. These are real things. But even with those things, you have to conquer them things or else Satan will come in and completely defeat you. One of the ways you do it if you're a victim of something violent, and that's real, I'm not discounting that. One of the things you can do is, get this, just change the voice. Just change what you call that thing. Just the word change has power. Instead of saying, I'm a victim, say, I'm a survivor. Amen. Just that change automatically shifts something inside of you. Because if I'm a victim, I'm going to feel all the stuff that victims feel. When I'm a survivor, I'm saying to the attacker, you lost. I survived. You tried to stop me, but you didn't stop me. I'm still standing. I'm still moving. That little shift in words. So first thing you want to do is understand the power of words. That it's not just words, but wor the words you use, how you use words. You know, all my life, I've, all my adult life, this is all I've done. So obviously, like a carpenter, words are like my tools. So I'm very strategic in words that I use. And you have to become strategic. Like, just start doing that. Just change the words. Like, instead of saying, I'm overwhelmed. You know, every time you say that, everybody's different. It releases certain chemicals based on what that means to you. I'm broke. Just that word, I'm sick, I'm not going to make it. The doctor said. Those words are tied to certain chemicals that are released inside your body. And so if you just change the wording, just little words makes a big difference. Instead of saying, I'm overwhelmed, maybe say, I got a situation. I'm just thinking something that's not so intrusive, not something that won't just grab you by the neck. Instead of saying, I'm broke, just say, you know what? Uh, I'm overcoming some stuff right now. You, I'm just, you understand, you, you have to find words that don't grab your neck. We're losing everything. Truth of the matter is, Satan always makes us exaggerate. 
When you say I'm losing everything, well, let's think about that for a second. Everything? <laughs> really? Okay, you're, you're not losing everything. You mean everything? Yeah, I'm losing everything. You mean everything? Yeah. Well, let's see. Let's go down the list. You're losing your eyes. No. Losing your nose. No. You lo <laughs> oh, you're not really losing everything. You see, the enemy makes us exaggerate. But I had a terrible day. I'm just, I'm dying. Wait a minute, you're dying? <laughs> see, just the words, how you say it. How, just those little bitty things. My, my, my kids are just, I can't, I just can't take it. They're just, they're just the worst. The worst? Really? The worst? Wow. Well, let's see. Let's see. I can tell you about some really bad stuff. Let's go, let's check the news on some past stuff. This kid cut his mother up. Did you say your kid's the worst? <laughs> nah, you see, it's just the words. We have to be mindful of that because warfare, hear me now, warfare, 90% of warfare are words. Please understand that you're waiting for a demon to appear. I get all that. But if he can get in your head with words, the demon doesn't have to bother you. Because the words will go with you everywhere you go. So warfare comes in words. What did I just say? Warfare Come on, everybody, say it. Warfare comes in words. You've got to get this. Remember, when I just come to church to get goody points, you've got to get this. We've got to change our lives, people. Listen, I bury people all the time who regret not breaking through, not living the potential. And you have a chance to do it. You have a chance to grow. And I'm telling you, at some point, you just got to move past. I, I'll never forget, there have been times in my life I just had to say, Lonnie McCown, you got to move past stupid. You just got to move past stupid, man. This is about, this is about something selfish in you. You got to move past that if you want a life. Now, certain things should make you want to do that automatically. Kimberly talks about if you love the thing, and it should, like the kids. You love your kid. It should make you just want to take care of them. We get all that. But sometimes things that are so inspirational like that don't motivate us. We have to have desperation, like you almost lose your life. So anyway, I'm just trying to get to the point that everybody has this victim mentality. And if you're not careful, it's going to release chemicals in your body. It's going to make you feel horrible. The scripture that tells us how to overcome all the things that's attached in our mind, that's attached in our mind is 1 Thessalonians. It's 1 Thessalonians 5.16. I think we might have four up here, but it's really five. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, ceasing watches, give thanks in all circumstances, not for the thing, but in the thing. This is very important. He says, here's how you deal with stuff. Give thanks when you're in it, not because it happened. He says, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Next verse. It says, we slay the darkness by choosing joy over choosing to pout Amen. our whole lives because life wasn't fair. And let me tell you why I love this version because it says, you slay the darkness, you slay the dark voices, you slay the enemy when the enemy comes after me by getting in the light. And the Bible says one of the ways that I can do this is I can do this by what I'm thinking on, that I'm being grateful that gratitude changes everything. And uh, Dr. K will tell you this, that do you know that when you say thank you, when you are grateful, it releases dopamine from your, in your, you know, that's a feel good. It releases dopamine, you start feeling good. Just saying thank you. Some of you could do that today. Amen. Really. And watch what happens. Just being grateful. So I want to encourage you to understand the warfare comes in words, Everybody's hit with this mentality of I want to be a victim. The second thing we're all hit with is complacency. Complacency is dangerous. It's a temptation. It says I'm satisfied where I am, and I don't have a desire to go any further in life. The moment you stop moving forward, you start moving backwards. The moment you stop living, you start to die. The moment your relationship stops growing, it starts dying. Everything starts to die if it's not moving forward. And if you're at a place in your life, I don't care what your age is, if you have made a decision, I'm content like this, and there's nothing else I'm going to do with my life, you're dying. You're dying faster than you want. 
And that's why complacency is bad, and that's what the enemy wants us to do. Complacency causes us to be numb. And with this generation, the way we do it is real easy because we have the smartphone and we have social media that when we want to check out, we just start scrolling. Talking to somebody, you check out, you just start scrolling. That's the way that we do it today. You want to know when somebody checks out? They just scroll in. And so we have to be careful because the enemy wants us to have this mindset to say, well, I can't, this is as good as it's going to get. And God is saying, no, with him on your side, it could always get better. We go from glory to glory. And you want this mentality because you want to always know that it's not just about you, you're for it no more. It's always about the next generation. It's always about who can you bring with you. Amen. And I'm telling you, everybody who figures that, you know, me and my four is fine and that's it. I'm going to close the door, eat, drink, be merry, and die. That's exactly what's going to happen faster than you think. And Satan will suck everything from you faster than you know it. But something about people who are engaged in saying, you know what, even though I'm doing okay, I'm not going to just be complacent. I'm going to look and see where can I find a problem and I'm going to be an answer. It's those people that start living, and they start living a life that's unbelievable. So I want to encourage you to do that. The next thing that the enemy will do is he brings this thing, and all this habit is it's being, a, it's, it's being a sinister, cynicism. You know what that is? It's finding negative in everything. You know anybody like that? Everything they look at is negative. You have to be careful because those people are hurting for something that happened in their past. And what they're trying to do is make everything bad so they don't hurt again. And so what they do is they just try to pick at stuff, no matter what you do. Everybody say, ooh, your hair looks good. It's, it, man, it's, you, it's on point. Look at that, it's 100. They'll say, yeah, it's all right, but it's a little uneven there. They should have cut that over there. If it was me, I would have had them cut it this way. <laughs> they don't even know they're saying it. I, I mean, they, and you'll meet people like that no matter what good comes. They have, to, they have to hit you low. They have to find something. That's not about you. It's about them. And the reason this is important to understand is because once you get locked into that, Satan keeps you in this cycle. Remember, we're supposed to go through seasons, not cycles. Seasons, you go in, you come out. Summer, winter, spring, all that. You come in, you're supposed to know, you know, summer in your relationship, summer in your health, winter in your health, winter, spring. But you, you should go through those seasons. A cycle is when you get stuck and you just stay in one thing. You stay mad. You stay distant. You stay angry. You stay confused. You never come out. And that's what the enemy wants. And I'm telling you, if he can get you to stay in that cycle long enough, your brain will change and that will be your new life. Don't you know people like that? You think, man, how can you stay living in crazy? It's not crazy to them. They've adjusted. Their norm is now crazy. Their brain adjusted to crazy. You know people like that? You think, listen, and I'm not knocking this at all, but there are people, and you, some of you, you uh, counselors and therapists, so you work with people who... I, and I see these people in the street with blankets, a mattress, pushing a cart, everything they have in it. I'll never forget, there was this one lady, I just felt so bad. I'm at Starbucks. And she's standing outside. I said, listen, let me pay for you to stay in a, stay in a hotel for a week. She went, that's going to cost blah, 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 blah. She goes, just give me the money. <laughs> she's dirty. I said, don't you want to shower and a good night's sleep? She says, no, just give me the money. I can do a whole lot more with that money. And I realized to her, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but that crazy became her normal. Yes. She was all right with that because her brain changed. And this is why we have to get out of living in certain lifestyles. Like if you're living in a house and everybody's screaming, everybody's cussing everybody else, throwing knives, and <laughs> well, maybe not doing that, <laughs> Well, everything's going wrong. You got you to stop that because you can adjust to that and pretty soon your brain will change and that's the new you. So how do we fight this thing? This is what I want to get to and then we'll take it from here next week. And I'll do this real quick. First thing we have to do is realize that the Bible says in Corinthians that we have been, that the Bible says we've been given, we've been given powerful weapons to come against the fiery darts that's thoughts in our mind against the devil. We have been given these, this spiritual ammunition because we're in a spiritual fight. Now, this is important. I know people ignore this. They think we just come to church. Folks, listen, church is such a small part of it. You and I are in a war for everyday 
war is going on in your life. Amen. People say, I had a close call. Listen, every day, man, there's stuff you don't know about. Thank God for his grace. He's blocking stuff that you don't even know about. The stuff you know about is stuff you know about, but there's a hundred things you don't know about that he saved you and your family from. And the reason you need to understand it, yeah, come on, give God praise in here. You need to understand this because that's warfare. That's spiritual warfare, and you have to acknowledge it, that there's a real war. And if I'm in a real war, I want the people around me, my family, my friends, my relatives, I want people to understand if you're close to me in a war, casualties happen if you're not prepared. That's why you got to prepare people in your family and prepare people in your life because this war will take their life. Yes, Lord. And you have to let them know this is real. Any little thing could happen. I just heard the other day one of the supervisors in Oxnard who, well, her name slips me right now, Carmen Ramirez, who's been in our church at our other location, and I've been in meetings with her. I just read she's walking in the, through the crosswalk and was hit and killed. I'm thinking in a crosswalk? Yeah. You understand, up until now, you've survived every attack through the grace of God. And everyone was out, have come to you to kill you. But for the grace of God, we survived. Right? But for the grace of God. So, so we have to understand this. So what do I do? What, how do I guard myself from these voices? The first thing I have to do, okay, listen. Here, I'm going to give you this real quick. First thing, understand you're in a war. war. Warfare starts with words. Okay? I'm in a war. Warfare starts with words. Okay? It's important. I can't destroy the, web, the warfare that I'm in, I can't destroy them with physical means. I've got to slay the darkness with the light of God that's inside of me. So how do I do that? First thing, as I said, understand when something happens, the warfare starts with words. So when a thought enters your mind, the Bible says in Corinthians, it says, bring every thought captive. Yes, that every thought in us have to be Captive. We have to, first of all, capture it. Why? Why would God tell us every thought? Man, how do I do that? I'm going to share with you how to do it. How do you capture every thought? Because that's a lot of work. He says, capture every thought to see if it's obedient to God's word. Because the word that comes in your head is the philosophy of the world. It's a philosophy of how you grew up. All those things will challenge what God says about you. So he says, when you get these thoughts in your mind, capture them first. Okay, so let me try to walk you. Let, let me walk you through this. I'm not going to try, I'm going to do it. Let me walk you through this very quickly. So first thing I have to understand, warfare starts with words. Second thing I have to do, I said last week, I have to think about what I'm thinking about. I have to be mindful to think about what I'm thinking about. Now, is it easy? Heck no. But you got to start. Think about what you think about. Then the next thing you have to do, and this is probably one of the most important things, is I have to identify whose voice that is. So the best way to do it while you're learning this is, listen, while you're learning, don't trust any voice. Don't walk by the voices in your head Walk by the verses in the Bible first. All right? Until you grow. Don't trust any voice. Only trust the verses until you grow. If you don't know the verses, ignore the voices and go with the verses that you see in God's Word. Now, as you start growing, you'll know what the verses are and you could use the verses next to the voice. But until you are clear, and let me tell you real clear, because Satan knows the Bible better than most Christians I know. The scripture says he knows the Bible. So you can't, you can't rely on just the scripture. How does Satan use scripture? He uses scripture by giving a little truth. He puts a little truth and then he wraps it and tangles it in a bunch of lies. So anytime you're dealing with people, they'll say, well, here's the truth. Yeah, it's a little truth in there, but it's tangled with a whole bunch of lies. 
and I can't get to the truth without cutting myself in the lie. And that's how Satan traps people. So what I have to do is I have to understand. Until I understand the verses, I trust no voice. All right? Now, once I understand the verses, I can start trusting the voices, but now I have to know what filter do I bring those voices through? How do I know it's God or the devil or me? So I told you about my experience at Starbucks. I wasn't proud about that. Thank God I was able to go and had a good day. The next day I went to Starbucks. The next day I do it every morning. But the other day I go to Starbucks. I'm going to tell you, I go to Starbucks and they're closed. Every Starbucks is closed. I thought we have a national crisis on our hands. Something's going on. <laughs> well, I found out it's closed to go inside, which I'm okay. I can drive through, but you couldn't even drive through. You had to order on your app and you could pick up. And I thought to myself, hmm. And then all of a sudden, voice A in me. They should have sent something out on the app to tell everybody. <laughs> voice B in me. Ah, it doesn't matter. It's just let this thing go. Voice A in me. You got to say something about this. <laughs> this is just how it's happening because it's how it happens to all of us. I'm using Starbucks because I don't want to use other conversations because, you know, it's none of anybody's business. But... Everybody has conversation. How about when you're dealing with your mate and the conversation is, you're going to let her talk to you like that? That's voice A. Voice B, does she know who I am? Oh, oh you guys know, and the people said, amen. And then you're walking out, and the voice walks out with you. You get in the car, the voice gets in the car with you. Oh, he doesn't know who you are. He's talking to you like that. He doesn't know how many, does he know how many people are after you? He has no idea. He been, Oh, yeah. The, the voice will follow you and keep talking to you and instigate to you until you act on it, and then it condemns you. Looks at you and shakes his head. Wow. I bet you're proud of your stupid self, aren't you? <laughs> so anyway, I said I'm not going to make a big deal. I happened to be talking to a friend on the phone at the time when I noticed I went to Starbucks. I said, oh, man, Starbucks. Can't go in Starbucks. And I'm thinking so much, man, I want to say something, I want to say something, but okay, I didn't. And uh, I went home, and the voice says, just call the main office and ask them what happened. I'm not calling that main office. Voice A, why don't you just call the office, get it over with, ask them what happened. After all, you've been to Starbucks for years. You're, you have stock in Starbucks. You have a right to call. This is voice A. Voice B says, are you serious? This is the subject you're teaching. Let this go. This is my voice. I'm thinking, yeah, I got this. No big deal. I started doing other things. I kid you not, voice A keeps telling me, why don't you just call and see if you got any rewards? <laughs> listen to me, because if it doesn't get you to listen to the first thing it says, it'll get you to take a step closer in the direction it wants you to go. I said, yeah, I need to call anyway. I've been meaning to call Starbucks. I really was meaning to call Starbucks to find out about these rewards. And I wanted to ask them some other things because I don't know how to work the app in certain areas. So I called them really about the rewards. And guess what? I got them on the phone. So voice A comes back and says, ask them why they were closed. <laughs> so then I thought, well, I'm going to win because I'm going to make sure I say it in a nice way. I said, by the way, why were you guys closed the other day? And I realized voice A won. That quick. Why? And I'll close with this verse and we'll start here tomorrow and I'll tell you how to we'll unpack this. The Bible says that Satan is a father of lies. <clears throat> There's no truth in him at all that every time he opens his mouth, he's lying all the time. And you got to understand this because the Bible says that the scripture says that Satan, Jesus is talking to to the Pharisees, he says, your father, Satan, is a father of lies. Look at this. He says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his negative language, for he is a liar. And the father, he's the father of the lies. So you're not going to win him, so we have to find out how to filter that lie through, through truth. And I'm going to show you the five things. There's only five. We're not going to have time now. I'm going to stop here. Here's what we'll be next week. Five things on how to filter. Because many of you want to know, okay, how do I deal with this? 
Okay, there's five things you run every thought through, and you can do it real quick. Five things, and then you'll know if it's God, if it's the devil, or if it's you. I'm going to close our service right now. You guys can play that nice music again you were playing because I really enjoyed that. And um, I have the privilege of doing two things. We're going to close. First, many of you know Pastor Richard and Barbara. Stand up, you guys. Uh, Pastor Richard and Barbara has been with us 19 years. Wow. Yay. Well, this is their last Sunday. They'll drop in from time to time, but they moved up in Santa Maria area. And so they're going to be leaving us. We're going to pray for them. And I want you two to come up here, would you? Would you all stretch your hand towards this couple? We're going to miss you guys. Thank you for your service. Thank you for the gift that you've given to the kingdom of God. It will never be forgotten. And the scripture says, great will be your reward. So we honor you and we thank you. Stretch your hands, everybody. Father, I pray for this couple. And in Jesus' name, I surround them in a perimeter where they're protected. And may the rest of their life be the best of their life. And I decree and declare everything that they've given this ministry, their time, their talent, their treasure, I pray it'll come back a hundred times in this life. We plant them as a seed and may open doors await their arrival. I decree and declare long, strong health in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, yeah. Now listen. Before we, we're going to dismiss in a second. I'm going to have Pastor Barbara, Pastor Richard, and his wife Barbara in just a second. You guys go go back to your seat for now. I'm going to have the ushers. They're going to escort them at the back door in just a moment. I want them to go out there. I want all of you to give them a big hug and a or high five, and even if you don't know them, thank them. They've been very committed for 13 years, and we appreciate all that they've done. 19, 19 years. All right, final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pray, do a baby dedication, and little Kalea doesn't know what's getting ready to happen, but I want to tell you something. This, you know, it really, I'm amazed because I was watching my little grandson the other day, a little legend. And I wish I had that picture. Man, just, this guy is just, he's just an amazing, great-looking guy. He looks like his papa, but he's just, uh, um, anyway, I look at it, I just love these little kids. And little Kalea, who uh, Kirsten's been down visiting, she'll be leaving, I think, next week now, but we've had the privilege of having little Kalea. She doesn't even know I'm talking about her now. But she's the one I told you, every time, and I mean every time, going to sleep, if she's in the car, she'll start saying, Papa, Papa. And she wants to get the iPad or the phone, and she turns on our service. She wants to hear me teach and hear our singer sing every single day. And you see her down here praising and worshiping and all that, and all that's real. So I'm going to dedicate her. I'm going to pray for her. And um, as you know, uh, Kirsten's husband, Tay, Kalea's father, is in the United States Air Force. But I think, it, did we, is he on the phone? Or it didn't, oh, it didn't, okay. Is, is he on the phone there? I don't know. But anyway, I think they're going to try, we were going to try to patch him in live, but I think we may have him on the phone. But anyway, we're going we're gonna to pray for Kalea. And so uh, I'm going to ask Kirsten if you'll bring her down, and then whoever's going to come stand, Feel free to come on and stand uh, with her. And th- this little girl, I'm telling you, she is, let's see if she's going to let us do this, but it's just an amazing phenomenon. Come on. Come on, Kimberly. And, hey, Kalea. How you doing, girl? How you doing, Kalea? How you doing? Hey, Sue. How you doing? Hey, what's up, Pat? How you doing? So Kalea has two papas now. Yeah, look at there. Who's that? 
Caleb, you wonder what we're doing? We're going to pray for you. <laughs> okay? Do you want to say anything? Do you want to say something? Okay. Share with Cindy. And there's, there's the, the airman on. All right. We're going to pray for her now. So I'd like everybody to be so kind and stand, with, would you? Now, Kalea is a COVID baby. She was, she was born in, during COVID. And COVID means conquering over vices, interfering with my destiny. That's what it means for her. Remember that. We have this on tape. That's what it means for her. So everybody stretch your hands this way. Father, in Jesus' name, we dedicate little Kalea to your service and to your glory. I anoint her ears, anoint her hands, anoint her feet for the rest of her life. She will work for you, dear God. I pray a protection over her, over her mind, her body, and her spirit. I decree and declare, dear God, use her as your prophet is. Let the words that she has been hearing, the hunger she has for your kingdom, let it touch her generation, lead her, as, use her as a generational leader. I pray this, and I bless her. I bless her mom, I bless her dad, and I decree and declare from this moment forward, a new level of grace for their family. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, Corleo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, give her a big hand clap, everybody. Yeah. Beautiful. She is surrounded. She's got two papas, two nanas, two Two, three, they just, she just, what a, what an incredible uh, time this has been today. I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to remind you about Wednesday at 7 o'clock. We'll be here. Bishop Allen, their church is going to be here. Please come out to pray with us. We're not only going to pray for the portals in this area, for the portals in your house. Things that have been in your house that don't need to be there. We're coming after them. Wednesday, 7. Please join us. Pat and Sue, thank you guys for coming. Good to see you all. And hey, do me a favor before you leave. Our singers are going to sing and take us out. Pat, uh, Barbara, would you would you and uh, Pastor Richard go on to the back quickly, please? We're going to, everybody's going to congratulate you or give you some love. Just go on to the back door there. There you go. Now stretch your hands, everybody. May your day be blessed. May doors open for you. Every trap that Satan forces has for you, every network set up against you, I break that now in Jesus' name. Victory has now come to your house. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. You're dismissed.
trust